What's up everybody, it's Scapegoat here, and in this video we are going to be going over the oscillator section of Odin 2. Everything you need to know will be down in the description box below, so without further ado, let's get started. So moving up here to the oscillator section, you're given three oscillator slots, and you have this little drop down menu which is the oscillator type, which you have a good amount of oscillators to choose from, and you can kind of mix them around with the different oscillator slots, it's really awesome. One of the things you'll notice on these different oscillator types, regardless of the type it is you'll notice some common parameters up in the corner here and those common parameters stay the same throughout you have your oscillator octave which is going to detune the oscillator in whole octaves you also have the semitone which is going to detune the oscillator in semitones and you have your fine tune which detunes by sense you're also given your main little volume knob here, which will regulate the volume in decibels. They have this little RST button, which can be enabled. That is the oscillator reset. And what that'll do is it'll basically reset the oscillator to its initial position. This might come in handy when you're doing something like a bass and stuff like that, where you need the oscillator to always sound the same every time you press down a note. Depending on how you have your patch set up, you might have a sync option as well. And when enabled, that's essentially going to sync the oscillator together. I have a diagram up here from the wayboarding guide to give you an idea of what's going on. So our first oscillator type we're going to go over is the analog oscillator and the analog oscillator aims to emulate the classic analog synthesis. So you're given your basic waveforms, you have your sawtooth, your pulse wave, your triangle, and your sign. You're also given the pulse width knob, which only affects the pulse waveform, and you can adjust the width. I have the diagram right here from the waveboarding guide to give you an idea. You also have a drift knob. In the analog world, the oscillators tend to not be sort of stable in their frequencies. What the drift knob does is it emulates that randomness. Once you have two oscillators enabled, you can really start to hear this effect. Next, you have the wavetable oscillator, and with the wavetable oscillator, it can allow you to create more evolving types of sounds. You have this wavetable selector over here and then you have about 35 different wavetables to choose from and on each wavetable you have this wavetable position will, and the wavetable position will shift. Each has four different waveforms. So when you have the wavetable position at zero it'll give you the third wave and then when it's at 0 0.3 you get the second and then 0 0.6 you get the third and then when it's at one you get that last wave. Next you have a modulation selector here and by default you have the mod envelope in the LFO1 modulation source um, but you can also alter this more in the modulation matrix which we will be explaining in a future video. Lastly you have the amount and this just sets the amount of modulation being used as you're modifying the wavetable position. What's cool about this is you can use both positive and negative values. The next oscillator type you have is the multi oscillator and the multi oscillator is essentially four oscillators in one and this will allows you to get more of a richer sound. And so starting you do have a detune which is going to detune the oscillators against each other and it is done in a way so that you can avoid random phase cancellation and stuff like that. Then you have your wavetable selector which is the same as the wavetable oscillator. You also have a wavetable position which also acts the same as the wavetable oscillator. Depending on which position you have it, it will shift through the wavetable. You're also given a wavetable spread knob over here that's going to spread the four sub oscillators over the wavetable and so you have the first oscillator which is going to be uh, shifted to the left and then the last one will be shifted to the right the next oscillator type we have is the vector oscillator the vector oscillator is very similar to the other type of wavetable oscillators in which you can create more evolving type of sounds in this case you have these different letters a through d in which you can assign different waveforms to you have a bunch of different waveforms you can choose from and this also includes drawable waveforms, which we're going to get into later. Essentially, you can use this XY pad to morph between the waveforms. Next, we have the chiptune oscillator, which is really good for creating those nostalgic type of sounds. It's meant to emulate sounds like on the Super Nintendo and consoles of that era. And what you have here is you have your waveform selector. You also have a noise button here, which is a special type of noise that is meant to emulate 
the same noise that was present on a lot of the vintage types of consoles. You also have an arpeggiator which gives you three steps in total. You can cycle between the first two steps and the third step you can turn on and off and you can enable the third step based on the position of the knob here. The arpeggiator also increments within semitones. You also have a speed knob here which controls the speed of the oscillator and it's measured in hertz. The next oscillator type we have is the FM oscillator and it, this synth gives you a very convenient way to set up frequency modulation. Essentially the basic idea behind it is that you have two oscillators. One is the carrier and the modulator. The modulator basically modulates the frequency of the carrier based on the amount. The modulator essentially is used as a modulation source for the frequency. For more information on this I will leave a link in the description down below as well. And in this case you have for both the carrier and modulator your waveform selector. Above and below you have this number here that is essentially your ratio and I have a little equation here from the official guide to give you an idea for what's sort of going on underneath the hood and then in the middle here you have your main frequency modulation FM knob which controls the amount of frequency modulation next we have the phase modulation oscillator which is very similar to the FM oscillator except for the modulator is modulating the phase instead of the frequency so in this case it's very similar you have your waveform selector your ratio and you're also given your phase modulation amount knob in the middle here. The next oscillator type is the noise oscillator, which essentially generates white noise by default, and you're given a high pass and a low pass filter, which you can adjust the noise based on your preferences. The next oscillator type we have is the wave draw oscillator, which is really cool, one of my favorite parts of the synth, because it allows you to draw on a custom waveform of your choosing. One thing to note is that the effects will only take place only after you hit this apply button right here it's like a little green check mark when you make a change it'll turn red and then you hit it again that's how you know it's applied next you have the chip draw oscillator which is very similar to the previous draw oscillator except it's meant to create custom chip draw waveforms that emulate the super nintendo type of sounds the way this works is that the waveform consists of 32 steps in horizontal direction which can be offset to 16 values or 4 bit in vertical direction the same thing here applies when you do draw on a waveform, you have to make sure you hit the apply button down there. Lastly, we have the spec draw oscillator, which allows you to essentially harness some capabilities of additive synthesis, which is a little bit different from subtractive. Here, you're essentially building up a sound by stacking up individual harmonics. And very similar to the previous draw synthesizers, your changes only take effect after you hit the apply button.
And that basically covers it for the oscillator section. In the next section, we're going to be going over the filter section, so stay posted for that. I hope you found this one helpful. Until next time.